Ladies and gentlemen, I take you back to the antiquity, about 50 before Christ, times of manslaughter, civil wars, Caesar, politicians, poets, and Cleopatra. She, who I would love to meet if I could go back on time. And let me tell you why. First of all, I think when you, all of you hear her name, you immediately picture this very sensual and attractive Egyptian queen. Well, let me tell you this there's a big possibility you are all wrong. And this is the first reason for wanting to meet her. I want to know who she really was, because Cleopatra actually is a beautiful lie. There are only some simple facts we know about her for sure, and the rest is purely based on Roman gossip. And the Romans hated her. And then what they wrote about her are almost the only sources we have. So Cleopatra, ladies and gentlemen, is a historical figure turned into a myth. But I find that idea very beautiful. You know, writers, painters, sculptors, playwrights, artists in general, they shaped her into something like a goddess. To them, she is Venus. She is both strong and vulnerable, queen and gypsy, captivator and captive. She's, she's like the moon, beautiful but ever-changing. So they created this bedazzling, angelic witch, and they didn't care about how she really was. You know, the idea of her was just enough. Then, what do we do know about her? First of all, that she was a megalomaniac, and I just love that, because usually megalomaniacs are not really popular, but I believe this particular fault in Cleopatra's disposition makes her more of a Cleopatra than she could ever be. You know, it made her eager to always show her power in the most decadent way possible. Like, when she would want to impress someone, she would go all the way. I know this one time she hosted this party for her Roman lover, Mark Antony, and the floors were just covered with so many roses you couldn't see her knees anymore. And you know, she, she couldn't be impressed by anything. Like I read in this book written by Stacey Schiff that when she came to Rome as a guest in Caesar's house, and you can imagine Caesar's house would have been one of the most magnificent houses ever. But when she came in, she was all like, well, it'll do. Cleopatra was the most stuck-up queen you can imagine, and I adore that. I just adore the idea of a dominant Egyptian queen covered in transparent linen and huge pearls, dressed like Aphrodite, with one look, one look, tearing down the complete Roman Empire. Then uh, another thing I really like about her is the fact that she was mad, bad, dangerous to know. Why? Because she just was. I mean, she killed her brother, let her sister die. She was a pain in the arse for Rome. She was rich. She was intelligent. She could make a country that thought it had passed its time of glory glorious again. She could lie. She could act. She could wind you around her fingers and then let you starve in the gutters. And she had two famous lovers, Caesar and Mark Antony, both men who were very proud on their Roman descent. And you know, the thing the Romans hated so much about her it was, it was her extravagance. Because according to the Romans, the ideal wife said nothing and had as a duty only to obey her husband. And Cleopatra was the exact opposite. But I think the fact that she had a relationship with those men, you know, those very proud Roman men, the fact that she had a relationship with them proves that the Romans had it wrong. Because she was a woman, and she was a queen, and she acted like one. And even though they knew that she didn't fit in that perfect idea of the ideal wife, they let Cleopatra contradict his prejudices. And so they fell in love with her, like I think everyone would. So, this is all we do know about her, and the rest is this big, mysterious gap. And I would love to go back in time and fill that gap for you. But I have to say that I am a bit afraid that the truth might be disappointing. But then again, to me, she will always remain Cleopatra. She who will not be triumphed over. Thank you. Thank you for your speech, Sarah. If you were to meet someone like Cleopatra, a very stuck-up man or woman, would you like them? No. 
I would not. I would absolutely hate them. But, you know, it's, it's like when you see a film and there's this character who's so stuck up and beautiful and absolutely fantastic, you, it's like some sort of, you want to be them. And it's not nice to meet someone in that in real life, but it's, it's, it's intriguing, it's, it's fascinating. It's, it's not like that I would like to be with her, I would just love to observe her and learn from her, you know. Thank you. Um, what is the first thing you would say to Cleopatra? Hello. <laughs> I would say hello, and then I am from the future. Do not kill me, please. Uh, yes, that would be it. Thank you. How would you like to be remembered? As yourself or as a glorified myth? Hmm. Um, I think both sides are very intriguing. Um, I, I, I love to play the theatre. I, I, I want to do that next year. And I think that if you are an actress and you are a myth, it's like it's like you know Merlin Monroe, that kind of thing. It's so it's so intriguing, and it's. But I think that being a myth, your life has to, has to suck to be a myth. You have to you know murder, depression, everything like that. That's what, how you become a myth. So I wouldn't love I wouldn't like to be a myth in that way. But it's it's something I don't know. I, I have to think about that. But thank you. But. <coughs> Why did we make a, a myth or a legend out of Cleopatra? She's just a queen. She wasn't just a queen. Uh, you have to think that, um, you have to admit that in that time, um, it, it was like a man's world, and she was a woman. And in that time, that is something really extraordinary to be as a woman in that time, to be a queen, to really know what she wants, to really uh, step out. Like, she was so she was so charismatic, she was so intelligent. It's like, I think for writers, for artists, because that's how she beca became the, this myth, she was so, um, um, it's like she inspired people. That's how it, how it come to be, came to be. Thank you. Do you think that her ego and her grandeur would have been a sort of mask to cover up her, um, that she wasn't self-conscious, uh, self, um, that she wasn't proud of herself. You, you think that she wasn't proud of yourself, herself? No, I, I'm Do just asking if it's possible that it was that way. I think she was very proud of herself. I don't think it was a mask, it was her. Um, maybe it was like she knew that she had this sort of impact on people, that this, this, this glitter and glamour, she really used it, but it was like a part of her personality. It was not like a mask. It was just something she used, but it was not like something she, she, she used to hide herself, I think. Thank you. Uh, are there any people nowadays who are being turned to myth? Nowadays, I, that's hard to, to think. Um, mm, I can't predict that. I don't know. No, I, I can't say that, no. Just a little question, was she Egyptian? Uh, no, um, actually her family came uh, originally from Greece. Uh, so uh, she was really seen as the, the Greek uh, uh, um, a queen of Egypt, so no. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Lamp.